A friend of mine once told me that mathematicians do work in the bank. But I keep on asking myself, what exactly do they do? We talked to Shamir Shuka, who is a structured trader here at Absa Capital. Thank you very much. All right. Yes, um, uh, Mr. Shuka, uh, what I'd like uh, to ask first, can you take me through your academic background? Uh, your, your, your academic background is in university, what did you study? Sure. I started off um, doing a degree, undergraduate degree, in statistics and actuarial science. Okay. The reason I did that was because I wanted to pers pursue the career of an actuary. Mm. Um, it was quite lucrative back then, in terms of it was rated the number one sort of job um, to have at that point in time when I was doing my research. Yes. Um, so I pursued an undergraduate uh, in um, statistics and actuarial science. Yeah. Ve very, very soon after towards the end of my third year of com completing my undergraduate degree, I decided that the, 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 the actuarial profession wasn't stimulating enough for me. <laughs> and so what I decided to do was why switch. Was why wasn't it stimulating enough? The, 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 the reason why um, the focus in the actuarial profession that I was getting involved in was a little bit too much on um, life assurance, general insurance, uh, pensions, uh, employee benefits, and I was more interested um, in the financial mathematics side uh, and in terms of application more to the financial market. I decided to um, pursue the honours degree at WITS uh, in advanced mathematics or finance and my interest was stimulated in this field because um, it was relatively cutting edge and it was taking um, the application of mathematics into um, the realm of investment banking and the financial markets. So to me it seemed much more dynamic mm. uh, and so which is why I decided to apply for the program. I got accepted and, and I completed the honours degree. Subsequent to um, completing my honours degree, mm -hmm. I started off working uh, in the industry at Rand Merchant Bank mm. and I worked there for a while before I decided to do one more tertiary qualification which was a Masters of Science degree in Finance um, and I managed to get the opportunity to go to London to, um, to, to, to do my degree. Mm. And I, s I completed my degree um, at Imperial College in London. Mm. Okay, you did a lot of mathematics. Uh, you did a lot of mathematics in your academic right? Yes, uh, and not surprising because mathematics was my favorite subject at school. <laughs> to, to my mind, mathematics is a universal language. Okay, what did you love about mathematics in high school? I mean, some people find it very difficult. Yes, for, for me, it's a universal language and I found that it was the subject that came naturally to me and I really, really enjoyed uh, problem solving. Okay. You also worked at Rand Merchant Bank. Uh, how, what, what, what did you do at Rand Merchant Bank? I started off at Rand Merchant Bank um, as a quantitative um, in, uh, analyst intern. Okay. I, I worked there for a while before um, furthering my study offshore at London mm -hmm. and I subsequently then uh, rejoined um, as a fixed uh, income structure stroke quantitative analyst. Now, what does a quantitative analyst do? Or a um, quant? Can we call it quant? Yes, yes, okay. also known as quant. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, so the focus primarily there is about using mathematics mm -hmm. to apply it to the relevant disciplines in investment banking. Okay. And by that, I mean you could use mathematics to price up products, for example, derivatives products. Mm -hmm. You could use mathematics. Um, uh, in risk management, uh, of course, uh, uh, investment banks are in the business of taking um, risk. They're trading in the financial markets, so it's very important to be able to use mathematics to try and quantify how much risk um, the bank is taking, so that they can have a good control over it. Um, and so, a quantitative analyst uses the mathematical skills and applies it in those areas, um, adding value to different areas in the bank. Okay, a quantitative analyst also uses mathematics. Isn't it? How has the mathematics you've learned in your academic helped you so far in your job? I mean, for me, mathematics was key um, in, in, my, in my job because mm -hmm. it allows you um, to problem solve. Okay. There are different areas in the bank where you need to make decisions, mm -hmm. and those decisions could be buying or selling a product, mm -hmm. um, looking at the value of, of something. For, for example, a bank might see um, value in something that's out there and they could buy it they could buy something for a hundred rand and they might think the value of this is actually worth 150 rand mm -hmm. so mathematics allows you to translate real-world problems and decisions that you face 
um, into a mathematical world to help you um, uh, approach uh, the problem at hand uh, in an easier manner. As a quant, what level of mathematical skill do you need to have? Um, if you want to be a quant. I, I can tell you that in investment bank, a quantitative analyst requires a deep level of mathematics. And by that I mean you need to be um, competent in the various disciplines of mathematics. For example, you need to be uh, um, competent in the, in the um, pure side of mathematics, mm. but also then the application, the various disciplines of mathematics that apply mathematics. Mm. Um, you also, for example, need statistics. It's, it's quite an important uh, um, field to, uh, of knowledge to have when working as a quant analyst. And okay, so someone who doesn't like mathematics and love mathematics wouldn't be able to become a quant? Not quite, because one of the prerequisites mm. for, for working as a quantitative analyst is to have a deep level of, of, of mathematics. And I can honestly say that these days, locally, local investment banks look um, to hire quantitative analysts uh, uh, in the bank mm. that have a minimum of a master's degree in some sort of discipline of mathematics okay. and, and I can even say that international banks because of the stiff competition um, offshore they, um, they almost take a minimum of a PhD degree um, mm. as an entry level to working as a quantitative analyst. Okay, you currently work at APSA Capital. What do you do at APSA Capital? At APSA Capital I work as a structured trader okay. in the secondary markets division mm. and, and what that actually means is I get involved in trading of structured products and or transactions and a people often think that uh, structured uh, trading involves exotic derivatives. Okay. It, it is not uh, exotic in that sense. Mm. All um, it, it simply means a structure simply means a combination of different building blocks put together. And when I say building blocks, you take different derivative instruments, you combine mm. them together into one almost package, okay. a, 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 and you and you dealing and trading with that package. Okay. So what advice can you give to young academics who want to be quants, if I may say so? The advice that I can give is that, firstly, we established that it's very important to have a, a deep level of mathematics. Mm. So it's not enough to, uh, to just have an undergraduate degree in mathematics. You almost need an honors even to a master's yes. level uh, mm. of mathematics. That's the first prerequisite. The second, I would say what is an important skill to have, and I noticed myself with successful quants in the investment banking industry, communication skills is very important. By that, I mean it is very important to be able to translate a mathematical problem and the solution to it into English and a, and a real world decision mm. that you've got to make on that analysis. And that is a skill that what uh, uh, that differentiates successful quants from unsuccessful quants. Okay. In, in, in addition, um, it, it is imperative that quants be able to program, have some sort of programming knowledge. Oh. So it is not good enough that you can solve a mathematical problem on a piece of paper. <laughs> you need to be able to implement it um, using a computer, yes. come up with solutions and, and apply that to the real world. Because at the end of the day, Quant analysts and investment banks are there to help business make decisions around buying or selling, um, risk management, etc. Okay, you're also a lecturer, is it? Correct. Okay, so can you take us to uh, what, what do you lecture? The, the, the honors course that I mentioned previously mm -hmm. at VITS called the Advanced Mathematics of Finance okay. program. The, there is a course on there called South African Financial Markets and Instruments. Mm -hmm. and the course becomes useful to students when you get a practitioner such as myself lecturing on that course. And all it does is it puts what they're studying, the theory that they're studying in their other modules into perspective. It puts it in a, into a practical light and it really makes the students useful and marketable to the investment banks towards the end of the year, perhaps if they're uh, looking to um, go out into the industry and work. Okay, looking at South African landscape, uh, I'm mean, curious. Do you think that do we have enough quants or do we still need more quants in South Africa? The, the South African investment banking industry is not as, is not as uh, diverse and as uh, large as what it is offshore. Mm. So there will always be a demand for specialist quantitative analyst skills. But having said that, somehow limited because what we're starting to see is more and more students getting upskilled uh, in mathematics and trying to make entries into uh, in, into the industry, 
But at the end of the day, there still is a limited number of large investment banks in South Africa and then scope within the banks to have quant analysts. And how is your typical day at work? Do you work with a lot of numbers? Do you crunch numbers? Um, well, being a, a structured trader, mm -hmm. I've sort of moved over from the quantitative analyst role mm -hmm. a bit. And now I'm more involved in decision making, in actually trading products that are out there, derivatives, for example, and making decisions around when to buy and sell. Mm -hmm. Having said that, a typical day in my life involves um, getting in, uh, into the morning and watching um, market news, uh, reading uh, about current affairs, what's actually happening. Of course, we both know that it's information that drives uh, the markets and then the value of um, financial instruments that trade in the markets. So for me, information is key and I have to almost use my mathematical and quantitative skills to do analysis. So yes, I wouldn't do number crunching as perhaps what a typical quantitative analyst would do, but I certainly would do analysis, um, taking into account expectations of certain variables to allow me to identify whether something is, uh, um, is worth buying or selling. Okay, but for someone who doesn't like mathematics, how would you think that maybe your job is not enjoyable? How do you enjoy your day? I mean, your job, how do you enjoy it? I absolutely love my, my job because it is such a, a dynamic one. Mm. Um, I am never um, working on the same thing oh, yeah. uh, all the, constantly, all the time. It is very different. Um, s s news could come out that could completely change the current state uh, of the markets and assumptions we have made up until this far. Mm. And so then you have to be able to adapt quickly, you have to be able to make decisions, those hard decisions, to be able to um, maximize on opportunities that could be out there. Okay, okay thank you very much for joining us.